What is going on, Chelsea fans? Thank you for heading over to our YouTube channel. Hey, this is a clip from the entire Match Review podcast we did. Uh, it's only a segment. The, the full pod is like an hour long, so it doesn't make sense to be on YouTube. But it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Link in the description. Go check it out. Again, link in the description. But we hope you enjoy this clip. Until next time, Chelsea fans, you know what to do? Keep the blue flag flying high. I'm most interested about how we think Chelsea and Liverpool will match up on the pitch, not necessarily like tactically, but just like where are the moments uh, or the opportunities of weakness? Obviously, Liverpool uh, love to hit on the break, and it's devastating. But I think what's interesting is that last season, Chelsea were a lot more open tactically, and like you know, we were seeing gaps between the midfield and the defense. We weren't really transitioning as a unit. I tell you what, that match against Brighton, we sat, we had less than 50% possession against them. We sat back a lot. So I'm interested to see if we're both going to sit back and counterattack, maybe who is going to try to take the possession edge and maybe control it a little bit more. Um, I guess, you know, Neil, from, from your perspective, the Leeds match was wild to say yeah, the wild, least for yeah. Liverpool you know the 4-3 penalties do you, like I haven't watched at this point like do you feel like Liverpool are ready and kind of humming as far as like being able to to keep obviously the attack going but all the goals that were given up do you think that Chelsea are going to be able to try to get at them this early in the season well it's an interesting one because Leeds Leeds are pretty unique in the way that they set up. Obviously, they go completely man for man, so they 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 press all over the pitch. So it doesn't matter if you know if Genie Van Alden, for example, wanders into the left back position, then Leeds is holding midfielder Calvin Phillips was following him into the you know what would be for him a right wing position. So I don't think Chelsea will be a, be that extreme, but you would say that if Leeds can score three goals against Liverpool, Chelsea have greater quality than Leeds. So they have the ability to score goals against Liverpool, and you would you would you would think that one of the big messages for Liverpool is that they, they have to tighten up defensively. They have to cut out those mistakes. They made them against Chelsea, obviously in that game in the five three game. You know they were I think they were four one up at one stage with you. They were certainly a good mm-hmm. way up three nil maybe, and and ended up you know four three going into the last five minutes of the game. So they have they have shown that they do have a bit more of a brittle quality than what we saw at the start of last season. But I do the matchup, I mean to, to talk about the matchup that I see being decisive, I think I think the the two the two full backs of Chelsea against against the two wide men of Liverpool, I think that's just the that's where the game is won and lost. And in particular Alonso if he plays at left back against against Salah who looked well razor sharp against Leeds. I know what Alonso, you know, Alonso really isn't a left back. He's a left left wing back, isn't he? And that I think I think he did I think they did play that system last at Anfield last year. I think they did play the three centre backs. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder whether Lampard might consider doing that just to alleviate some of that that threat uh, in the wide areas and give an extra defensive body. But then, if you do that, you are obviously then seeding ground somewhere else, whether it's in your front three or in your centre of midfield, where you know Jorginho, Kante, and Kovacic was it against against Brighton? Uh, that's it's pretty strong. It's pretty you know pretty impressive um, in terms of its quality so I think if you were asking me where I think that game would be won and lost I would say whoever won that battle Chelsea's left side against Liverpool's right I think would be the one because you've got Alexander-Arnold obviously and, and Salah up against whoever and Alonso whether it's you know Mount or Havertz or whoever whoever plays out there I think that will be the decisive battle. Well, it be interesting because this past match, we got the Lampety versus Reese James comparisons because, of course, we're talking about right backs who are eligible for the English national team. And now we're going to get that same conversation, I'm sure, across this match between Reese James and Trent Alexander-Arnold. You know, I think what might be interesting, and I don't know how you're feeling about this, Brandon, is I could also see a scenario where if we do play that back four, you get Reese James on the right. Obviously, he is going to be able to kind of keep up with the pace of Alexander Arnold in a way that maybe like Aspilicueta can at this moment. But maybe you put Aspilicueta on the left, who is a much better one on one defender than someone like Alonso. He's played left back in some of our best seasons ever for Chelsea. I could see that as the way if we do want to go one on one on the wings. And potentially try to dominate the midfield where I think that, you know, if we were playing a side that had Thiago in it, I would be a little bit more concerned. But I think the midfield is actually the one area where we might be able to slice through a little bit and kind of make some of those quick transitions happen, especially if Havertz can 
level up just a little bit because some of what we started to see in the last match with his passing and his ability to move the ball forward for Werner looked really, really exciting. Obviously, Liverpool a lot more settled than Chelsea. We have a lot more mm-hmm. changes. We have less players available. So I think I always give that the edge. But Chelsea tend to show up for the big matches of the season. We could be struggling, you know, getting pummeled by Southampton, then come back, you know, and beat Man City. Like that's Chelsea in a nutshell in, in recent seasons. So um, I that's what I at least can take hope from. But I think it's really interesting. I mean, if you want to talk about a, a starting lineup, I still have no idea. You know, based on the, the pieces that Frank has available to him, like, I don't know. I just saw a great video of Jorginho and Emerson doing a boxing workout. Not sure that helps Emerson get in contention for a left-back spot. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, who do, who do you go to in these types of situations? It's early. There's a lot to lose. Is Frank going to be conservative or if he's just going to go for the jugular? It, to me, honestly, it's just wild to think of, like, where he's going to go. Who do you think starts in goal? Do you think Kepa will get the, get the nod in goal? I do. Just yeah. because he started the first one, I yeah. think that Frank's going to give him, give him the the role until he loses it again, like we saw last season. <laughs> Has he not lost it yet? No, I mean, it, it, do you think he should have could have done better with the the goal, the Brighton goal? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he came out for a cross, like he missed yeah. it, he flapped at it, but like Willie's not great with crosses either. It we're Brand, in a really Brandon, tough doing- situation. Doing like, the base minimum expectation of a job is not something that should be credit worthy. It's just to be fair. Not, Coming out to claim a cross, like I get not, it, right? You know, it's not something he did last season. But I think to to the point that Neil's making, my preferred lineup would have Willie and Goal. I do believe though that if we're thinking about how do you potentially move away from Kepa in the future, how do you hope to potentially give him some confidence? I could see a scenario where Man manager Frank Lampard is not going to try to erode his entire confidence before a new goalkeeper comes in and potentially lets him play in yeah. the sticks. Yeah, he also he did make probably the best save I saw from a visiting goalkeeper or an opposing goalkeeper against Liverpool last season. I think it was um, in the Super Cup in in Turkey. He made just this incredible save from I think it was Mane tipped it onto the onto the crossbar. So maybe he saves his best for Liverpool. We can hope. I mean, I, like the other thing you think of is Liverpool potentially get in behind, right? He's way more like um, athletic than Willie. Like he can come off his line. He, we may not know where the ball's going once it gets to his foot, but at least like he's there to be in a better position. Like Willie's gonna sit on his line. Like that's just what he does. He's thirty-eight. Like that's what he expects. 